introduce you? Sure. Uh, this is Dwayne O'Brien. He works at Indeed in the Open Source Programs Office. And we're here today to talk to you about, uh, see, now it looks bad. Oh, okay. uh, there's no sustainability problem in FOSS, except that there is. Uh, so we actually, there, the name, uh, the title sustainability is actually in our slide. And so we actually wanted to see if we could get uh, some ideas about uh, thing, things that have been called sustainability problems recently. Uh, we have, is there any way we can get it to present uh, on? Well, no, it's, it, it just, it's, it's off the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. That's off the screen? Yeah. Interesting. Right, bear with us one moment. Yeah, it's not this though. It was fine when we, let's just take it out of presenter mode. Okay. Sorry guys, just one sec. It's actually kind of hard to see. Yeah, I can't actually see where this is. There we are. <laughs> Technology. Just press present. There it is. And there I it think is. it'll auto scale. Yes, that right. looks so much better. better. Okay, thank you. I'm glad we took that second. Uh, so uh, we wanted to talk about things that have been called sustainability problems in in our ecosystem. So we uh, highlighted some some news articles here that we've seen, blog posts. Um, this open source and sustainability uh, blog post from the Open Source Initiative is published in 2008. If you can't see that, uh, so people have been having this conversation for quite a long time and in quite a lot of different ways and a lot of different contexts. So uh, have people. Are people familiar with the sustainability com like, the conversation? Have you heard it come up in news? Have you read articles? Have you had conversations with other people about sustainability? Can I see just approximate hands? All right, so quite a few people. Anybody want to hazard a guess or hazard their own definition for what that means? Like, what does it mean when you are talking to someone about sustainability? We're friendly. It's an interactive. Uh, say again? Consistent availability of participant time. Who has a completely different de definition of sustainability than that? <laughs> right there. Money. money. All right. So it's not about time. It's about money. Who has something that isn't time or money? A ability to remain consistent, it sounds like. Okay. Okay. A third, fourth, fifth? Dev, Devin's a cheater, but yeah. <laughs> it, it's about um, being able to depend on our infrastructure, which might entail ongoing development, but it also might mean that a project's done. And okay. Need more. okay, so ability to depend on our infrastructure, maybe it's done or maybe it's not. Right. So. Uh, so, uh, as you can see uh, from from all the different answers in the room, there's no one consistent definition. Uh, there's no one consistent way people are talking about it, and there's no shared understanding. Uh, however, there are lots of conversations happening around sustainability, and there's lots of programs that are meant to address sustainability problems. And we would even go so far as to say this is actually diminishing the problem. Uh, because there is no consistent definition and because we're often trying to apply one hammer to a bunch of different kinds of nails, uh, we're ending up in a situation where we're calling a lot of different things sustainability and it's actually uh, unhelpful to, to the conversation entirely. Uh, there's also no one particular solution. There might be different solutions to different kinds of sustainability problems and depending on your understanding and depending on the remedies that might be appropriate. So the, the previous talk queued up uh, uh, some events or issues that have come up in recent years. There's a chance that they will come up in every talk, so they're going to come up in ours too. Um, it's this one. I'm going to close this. All right. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Heart Street, uh, Heartbleed. We're going to talk a bit, little bit about LeftPad. We're going to talk a little bit about Event Stream as well. And I'm going to give a super redacted uh, version of the events for each one of these. Uh, and we'll take a look at are they, are they sustainability problems, are they problems, or are they issues that came up because of sustainability, uh, or are they something else? I also wanted to point out on this slide just some of, some of the headlines and how um, uh, exclamatory they are. Uh, one programmer almost broke the internet by deleting 11 lines of code. 
uh, Hacker Backdoor's popular JavaScript library, uh, What Heartbleed Taught the Tech World. Uh, the entire world has apparently uh, learned from Heartbleed, or maybe not. Uh, so uh, obviously, not only is this conversation happening, there's a lot of different kinds of conversations happening about sustainability, but people are scared. People are, are fearful, and I think that's also coloring, we also think that's coloring the debate as well. All right, so uh, the shortest possible version of events that I can give for LeftPad is a developer got angry, they deleted their projects from NPM, and the internet breaks. Now, that was the headline we saw in the previous article, and it was actually the way it was categorized in the previous talk as well. The entire internet broke when, when, when LeftPad was taken down. Well, that's a little dramatic. The entire internet br didn't break. Um, but th this was the shortest possible versions of events and the nature of the actual disagreement uh, came about because there was a, tr a conflict about the namespace that the developer was using, and NPM had to side on the, on the, uh, come down on the side of the trademark holder. So um, is this a sustainability problem? Yeah, so uh, this actually was a dispute about an entirely different package than LeftPad. The developer actually ended up taking, taking down all of his published NPM packages after, after this dispute. Um, but it ended up being the case, uh, we all found out in hindsight, that hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, millions of people had depended on these, on the, the, these 11 lines of code. And so when he took down these, these packages in a huff, all the people who depended on it, or maybe didn't even know they were depending on it, uh, ended up in a, in a difficult situation. Is this a sustainability problem? Uh, so uh, a lot of enterprises, a lot of really big companies were affected by the left pad events. And uh, <laughs> uh, a, lot, a, a lot of companies were very upset that someone would take down an uh, NPM they were depending on. And um, first of all, could they have written those 11 lines of codes themselves if it was so crucial to their infrastructure? And if we had applied more, more money, more time, more developers, more resources to LeftPad, would that have actually solved the problem? Would that have prevented people from having taken the dependency on the thing and then having it unpublished? No, he would have unpublished it no matter, it's, I, 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 would, I would posit, he would have un, unpublished it no matter how much time, money, energy, resources, he probably uh, wouldn't have if NPM had sided with him. But that's not a sustainability problem. Uh, and it probably ha likely has a different solution uh, than, than the other ones we're going to talk about. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, business responsibility. So uh, like I was saying, enterprises are all dependent on left pad. If you're an enterprise that's dependent on 11 lines of code that, if it's taken down, will take down your infrastructure, Who's, whose fault is that? Whose prob problem is that? I, I would go so far as to say you made a poor business decision far, far, far before that left pad package came down um, that maybe, maybe you're kicking yourself about. Uh, maybe you're quite upset that the, the, that package actually ended up uh, uh, causing some kind of problem to your infrastructure, depending on uh, the urgency. But even still, uh, why were you depending on it if it was so crucial to your infrastructure? It, why didn't you have uh, remedy, p p potential remedies and uh, fail-safes for, for those things being taken down in the first place? That's not, that's not the open source community's problem to fix. That, that is a business decision, uh, business risk uh, analysis you needed to make. So the good news is that clearly we learned something from LeftPad because later on we had a vent stream, right? Um, <laughs> And I, 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 you know, I'm being maybe a little facetious there, but I do actually mean it. We, we did learn something from LeftPad, and that is demonstrated by event streams. So the shortest possible events uh, version of events is there was a stable node module. The maintainer was no longer interested in it. A stranger showed up and offered to take over the project, and the maintainer said yes. Uh, and then the stranger used the project for malicious purposes. Now, the reason I say that we learned from LeftPad, in, and we can see that in event stream, is that for the most part, this didn't break the internet. That wasn't the headline, right? It was there were, you know, check your repos, there might be sneaky crypto uh, stealing code in there. Uh, so that's an improvement. It's still a sensationalist set of headlines. Uh, but I will, once again, is this a sustainability problem? Uh, so th this, I would say, is a divested responsibility problem, which is um, if there are vulnerabilities, if there are problems in, in other packages, you, need to, you have a responsibility in, in depending on them to, uh, to, to uh, apply responsibility appropriately here. Again, this is a question of 
would more time, more money, more developers applied to this particular situation have ac actually solved the problem? Uh, well, it, there's another aspect of this that is, you know, this was a this is a poor judgment on the maintainer's part, and his. I, I had a personal issue with some of the response uh, from the maintainer because they're, they, they took the position that they weren't getting paid for it and what do you expect and, and seemed to not feel like they had bore any sense of responsibility for it. Um, so maybe not a, a, a good judgment on their part. Um, but let's entertain for a moment uh, the idea that had this been done by a well-supported well-maintained, uh, well-supported, well-financed, very healthy work-life balance maintainer, had they just decided one day that they wanted to put crypto uh, mining code into all of their JavaScript dependencies, nothing about this would have been prevented, right? Uh, so th there's nothing about sustainability that created that particular problem, right? Uh, and the only thing really preventing a good actor uh, from uh, changing into a bad actor and doing this, we're just kind of taking this on faith. Right, so not really a sustainability problem. Maybe maybe some judgment, but not a thing that would have been prevented by pouring more money or time in, into the in, in, into the project. Do you want anything else? Okay. Oh. And and Heartbleed, uh, and I, I was probably kinder to this one. It is a white. There was a widely uh, used library. It had an undiscovered vulnerability, one that had been there for over two years. Uh, and the discovery of it uh, and um, awareness around it uh, created a huge, huge initiative to drive hundreds of thousands of updates onto public web servers. It was kind of a big deal. And in the process of doing this, of course, uh, the project gets heavily scrutinized. We recognize that it is maintained as a limited volunteer effort. Famously, uh, two guys named Steve, right, uh, responsible for securing the internet is, is, is a headline that was going around. Was Heartbleed a sustainability problem? So I would actually say that of the of the three cases that we've presented, this is likely the most uh, the the one I would most uh, want to call a sustainability problem because it highlights our interdependency on each other, and the fact that one vulnerability inter introduced into the system is it can actually affect all of us, and and that even if we take um, Good, good remediation, good caution around those things that we, we can still be su subject to these things. And in fact, we're living, we're living in a, the FOSS ecosystem in, in a world in which one thing can affect, can affect many, many, many of us. Um, and, and in this case, um, this, the, as, as Duane said, this was a vulnerability that had been in, in this for two years. And if there had been more security research applied to this, maybe it would have found, maybe not. Uh, but there, there could have been time and potentially developer resources applied to this and and potentially it might it might have been mitigated if not if not uh, avoided entirely uh, but this is a much different problem than the other two that we've mentioned and a potential solution would look much different to this uh, than it would to to the previous two as well I think we're just on the next one yeah. Yeah. okay so um, there, there isn't one there isn't a, a sustainability problem in FOSS there are are many, right? There are dozens of different categories of problems that may be related to sustainability. And there are other issues in the ecosystem that have nothing to do with sustainability that often get thrown in, into that same um, bucket. Uh, I remember the thought that I was going to raise about interdependency. Uh, uh, one of the problems uh, that we encounter uh, as people who work in open source program offices uh, is the problem of trying to balance the signal to noise ratio. So here, here's what I mean. Uh, I have a, a compliance tool that one, runs on a regular basis that tells us, uh, in addition to the license obligations that we have, the kinds of things that we are using, there are thousands and thousands of direct dependencies in this list. Which of them should I help? Which of them need help? Which of the updates are most important for us to be paying attention to? There's a tremendous amount of information there. Uh, and I think funding is a, is a really interesting um, thing to talk about for the person who, uh, who raised it as money, right? Um, there are thousands and thousands of dependencies in this list. Do I give all of them $10,000? Like, that's just very quickly cost prohibitive. And I know for a fact that many of them don't want that. Some of them might want five from coffee, right? Um, so uh, trying to figure out uh, in this vast sea of information, like which projects want what kind of help and need what kind of help is a, is a very big problem that is only felt from inside the context 
of an organization that is uh, highly dependent on a wide array of uh, open source projects, especially across different ecosystems. Uh, and so just to, to underline that, and what we need to do is we need to have many different kinds of solutions to, to the nuanced conversation about sustainability. So if all you have is a hammer of money to apply to FOSS liberally, uh, fair enough. That, that might actually uh, be the answer for some things, maybe more money into security research and to vulnerabilities in a particular ecosystem or a particular uh, language, what, what have you, might actually solve some problems. Uh, but that's not going to work for all of them. Uh, in fact, uh, it, it may be the case, as, as Duane said, that uh, they actually actively don't, don't want the money. Uh, and, in, and we need to find multiple kinds of hammers for multiple kinds of nails. And we need, also need to be having the nuanced conversation and recognizing the places where it's not about sustainability, that uh, uh, making, making poor, poor decisions for yourself is also a part of this conversation, making poor business decisions is part of this conversation, uh, and then our interdependency is also, is also important to recognize as well. So I want to un unpack just a little bit of what, what's on the slide here, right? Because without any additional context, these might look harsh or, 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 or unkind, and that's never their desire. Um, if, if there is a maintainer who has a job and is also maintaining a bunch of projects in their own personal time and finds that they are pouring so much time into those personal projects that they're burning out, in addition to there being some other kind of problem, there are problems around boundary setting for the project or the, or, and the maintainer. Right? As a maintainer, you are not obligated to say yes to anything. Right? Um, what will be helpful is for the project to clearly state these are the this is the scope of the project and these are the these are the uh, this is the level of commitment that I have to this project right now so that adopters who show up to use it understand what they're getting so maintainer burnout because they're over investing personal time in their projects is at least as much about boundary setting as it is the other factors that come into that um, there are definitely projects that have grown much, much faster than the support structure around them, right, in, in popularity and in usage and consumption. And we could, we could debate, and, and Carol and I have at times, about the role the company should play in establishing some policies to, uh, around the technology that is adopted there so that you're not adopting technology that is growing faster than it's getting support. Um, but for projects that have grown faster than the supports, those are important for us to mobilize and support if they're that important. Um, there is, I, I, I cannot say there is not a problem with companies over consuming un, uh, open source and under uh, giving back, right? So we definitely should be working within our companies uh, across the board to make sure that we are giving back in some amount of proportion to the value that we're deriving from those projects. Uh, signal to noise I've already talked about a little bit. Um, and there's also a, a problem for, that companies bear responsibility for where uh, the emphasis is put so much on developing features and pushing out new product that there is no time uh, allotted for developers to maintain and support the things that they have brought into the company, right? If a company is running on seriously outdated uh, free and open source software, the odds are they have prioritized f uh, feature work, which is profitable, over the maintenance work, which is equally important. And that is a problem uh, of balance that we have to shift. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, we, yeah, we have a couple minutes for questions, and I will repeat the question uh, for the folks on live streaming. Yeah. So on the previous slide, out of those five, um, which one would you say is probably like the low hanging fruit? Like, if we were to tackle this tomorrow, what would you say from your experience is the one that's more fruit, most prolific? So the question was of the five that we have up here, which one would be kind of the low hanging fruit or m most, most prolific? Uh, I, 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 I'll take a swing at that. Like, it kind of depends on what tree you're standing next to, right? Um, from, from, the, from my position running an open source program office, the lowest hanging fruits, the things that I have most um, uh, immediate ability to impact is our company's role in supporting and maintaining our dependencies, and that's sort of been the focus of the work that I've been doing there for the last couple of years. Um, that is a very different tree to a maintainer, right? Um, so I, it, it might be a bit of a cop-out because I'm not going to give you my opinion, but my, my challenge then is to figure out which tree is closest to you that you can affect and mobilize the people who, like you, can affect that particular tree. That would be my answer. Other questions?
also didn't know about the security vulnerability until research was applied to it and mm -hmm. started digging in, right? So how is that, like if we set aside the bad actor part of it, how is that different than the interdependency of part two? So the question is if we, if we for a second set aside an event stream, the good actor versus bad actor, how is that different from Heartbleed and, and therefore probably a sustainability problem that you, you would apply resources to? You, want, you, have a, you have anything to say? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not going to come down either way on, on, on answering, like, maybe it's no different or maybe it is. But there, there is a thing that, I, that I'll say. Um, there, was, there was some conversation in the previous talk about automated dependency updating and tooling to enable that. Tools like Renovate, tools like Dependabot and Greenkeeper and David, and there are a number of others that sometimes are ecosystem specific and so on. Uh, because it's seeking to reduce the toil of of getting uh, on top of this growing, ever growing tens and thousands of dependencies uh, uh, problem of keeping things up to date, right? If all they're doing is making it easy to update, it doesn't really solve the problem. Does anybody have automated dependency updating going on a project right now? Okay, a few of you. Anything built into that process to see what the nature of those different, uh, uh, d what the difference is between the thing you're updating from and the other thing you're updating to? Is it just, yeah. I, without that, um, the event stream probably would have hit a lot more people, right? We automatically updated to this thing, even if it went through the code paths and said, hey, the code paths that you know we have in here have coverage. It doesn't mean that it's not is going to prevent it from doing what it was already doing, and also this other little thing that you didn't know about. So it is a big, complicated problem. Um, we can apply more research to it, and 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 apply more uh, either effort from security or dollars to security. But I will also come back to that question of the thousands of dependencies in my in my inventory. Which ones are, I, I, can, I can get pretty close to which ones are most important to start by how often they show up, but that, we know that figuring out which ones of those are really critical for us to be taking a look at is a hard problem. If it wasn't, we'd have found it already. I was just going to add on to that, that I think, I think that really highlights that this is a very nuanced conversation, and we need to have it in a nuanced way, which is um, if we, we, we have to look at each of these problems and consider that there could be uh, multiple ways to have solved it or to have avoided it, um, and that uh, some might look like others, uh, some might be solvable by, a cert by money, some might be solvable by having more developers, some might be solvable by, uh, you know, uh, uh, more contributions upstream, what, you know, whatever the case may be, uh, and that it, it might be the case that they look very similar, but that we need to have the nuanced conversation to understand the, the nuance and the potential solutions. We, we still have time to take a couple more questions, so if you have one, by all means, put your head up, uh, uh, head up, hand up. Um, one of the things, one of the points that we didn't make but wanted to make was that painting everything with the broad brush of sustainability makes it difficult to know what we're really talking about. So if the only thing that you do after this talk is when someone says there's a sustainability problem, if you say, what specifically do you mean, you can at least make sure you're on the right page. And then I saw a couple hands. Sure. Um, how many developers work at Microsoft? Best guess? 60,000. 60, That's how. <laughs> right? Like, you could do it. Right. Maybe I could do it. And, but, you know, and, and maybe there's 600 different projects, and maybe they break down into teams of six, and you can establish a policy that you shouldn't consume anything that you don't know. But even if you're only talking about direct, direct dependencies, the lo odds of that really happening, I think, are low. Right, uh, well, it, it's a good place to be. Place to I'm sorry. I agree with you that that's the reality. As as a good place to start, and, and, and there's some validity to that, right? If you have 25 different libraries that are managing uh, date formatting, you can probably do better than that. Right? Are there other ha questions? Oh, we have two minutes. I think we should probably yeah. okay. okay. One last question. Yeah. I was just going to comment on that. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.